specialist boat? We are. Oh, we head back. Billy back. Phil. Bath Come time. Here. Come here. Good boy. Are you excited? Get some answers. Yeah. So we've left Nico at home. Quite far away for her to unnecessarily travel. Um, but she doesn't like being separated from Phil, so I'm sure we'll come back to some form of destruction. We'll have to see what level of destruction it is. We are off to see the specialist and get some answers on Phil's condition. We'll update you when we get there. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Tickle, tickle. You coming too? Phil, where are we? Where's Daddy gone? Billy Bear. Speak, Phil. Speak. Phil go. Oh. Are oh, we here? We are, aren't we? So I'm guessing due to coronavirus, they've got a sign you have to go and say to reception that you're here and then just wait in your car for someone to come and get you. So Shane's just doing that now. Uh, but I thought just in case anyone um, hasn't watched previous videos, just a bit of an update. Phil has a thyroid condition. He's been on, it's called hypothyroidism. He's been on uh, medication since October last year, so nine months. And um, his hair growth hasn't come back. His energy levels did pick up a bit, but they've kind of plateaued now. Um, but also now it seems like he's got quite itchy skin. It's like he wants to try and scratch or catch his tail and bite it all the time. And he hasn't really got any hair left on it now. Um, so what we're doing is we requested to see a specialist that somebody recommended to us online. Um, it's about an hour's away, drive away from our home. Um, and they are the European Dermatology Specialist. So we're going to go see them um, and see if there is any further treatment that Phil can have. See if we can do some allergy tests. Uh, all kinds, whatever they, whatever's available, we will be doing. Um, and yeah, I'll update you once we're inside. I'm not sure if we're all, we've got Mia with us as well, obviously, because me and Shane are here. So I'm not sure if they're gonna let all of us go in or if it's just gonna be one person. But one of us will take you in with us and we'll see what we can film whilst we're inside. So guys, Shane's just gone in to say that we're here and they're saying that we, they're gonna come out and take our dog and that's it they won't there's no consultation from us we're not allowed to go in to the vets with him even though with our normal vets we're allowed to go in and see them and collect medication as long as we're wearing a mask we're not allowed into the building oh, somebody's coming to get us like this fill on the back of her arm and she actually oh my god josh has got a wolf on tattoo but this is what they're going to do they're going to do a consultation from a car i get coronavirus is bad but if we're all wearing masks and she's about and we're paying a lot of money just to speak to them for 10 minutes and she's about 50 centimetres away from him taking the dog. Yeah, like, she's getting close there, and he's not even wearing a mask outside, fair enough, but just let us go inside of our dog. I just think that's shocking, the amount that you're paying for this, just to see them for 10 minutes to get a bit of guidance, and they're, we're not even going in with him. What are you going to do? Tell us about it outside our car. And if they can talk to you that close at your car, you might as well go in with them and talk to them. Exactly. What is that? This is a specialist. This is not what I expected. I'll stay with our local vet. Let's just hope they're a genius. Not feeling very confident right now. I don't know. What do you guys think? This seems like a bit weird to me that you can't go in with your dog. You have to leave them. What, what if they do? I don't know what tests they're going to do. Or I've got any questions you want to show them? Any questions? Areas? I've got like a list of uh, questions to ask them and then go through medication of the dog, the person that gave me the advice to come to this vet. So I've got their name, their dog's history. I wanted to ask all questions about that and see if we can mirror the treatment plans. Obviously. Oh, and he's driving off now. Do we leave the dog there and go? Or is that the dog booked in for an operation? I don't know. Obviously it's only because of the coronavirus though. It's not normal. I know, but two people wearing masks and standing six feet apart indoors. I didn't expect all of us to be able to go in, to be fair, but at least one of us. Poor oh, Phil keeps setting off the motion camera. There's a... Phil is a dog that gets excited to go to the vets. So, 
still, after all these blood tests and so many tests he's gone through in the last couple of years, he still gets really excited to see a vet. Hi. Hi. Are you waiting in the car for um, Shane? Yeah, black Mercedes. A black Mercedes. Okay. So with the coronavirus, I first have to do the consultation on the phone, and then I will come and collect um, um, Phil to examine him. Just one moment. I just need to open the door. I'll be right back, Shane. Sorry about that, Shane. Okay. And um, so, what is the main problem with Phil? Um, he has a, a skin condition. He's, he's losing fur. He's got like a rat tail, and it's, he's losing it um, like alopecia around his neck. Um, he's on thyroid medication, but every, yeah. his skin's going black underneath, like it oxidizes. When he gets shaved for blood tests, it never grows back. Okay, so the fur doesn't grow back. We do have um, uh, somebody that mentioned you to us to come here because their dog had the exact same condition, symptoms looked the same and they yep. had treatment and then their dog recovered to fully. Okay, it's putting the pressure on, isn't it? <laughs> well, we've got their, we've got their details, fine. so you should have their records to follow okay, the medication. Okay, that's great. That's good. Okay, now, um, what I'm going to do is just first ask loads of questions about um, Phil in general, and then we'll just talk a little bit more about the skin, okay? Okay. Yeah, okay. So the only treatment he has had is the Levanta, but it hasn't really done anything for his... Um, his hair coat itself. Yeah, not the cosmetics, no. Okay, great. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect um, Phil. We have to put one of our leads on him. Yep. And then I will um, examine him here inside with one of my nurses. And then I will give you another call to tell you what I found and what I think we need to do. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah, that's yeah? great. Okay, so I'll be out in a moment, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, bye. Bye. Hello. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I don't want to go to the bed. Say. Oh. Get him, Phil. Bite him, man. Get him, Phil. Get him. Good boy. Good boy. Billy Bear. Billy Bear. Billy Bear. Cut twenty twenty tail. He's <laughs> dressy <Tressie> fell. <laughs> Brandon. Ready? Brandon, is the rain getting you? Is the rain getting you in the face? Oh, Shane. Oh, no. Get down. <laughs> Naughty boy. He came to see Mia. Naughty boy scratching the car. Naughty boy. Look <laughs> at standing up. Standing. Looking at Phil. Here, Phil. Come on then, if you want to see her. Hello! No touching car though. Here. There's your cover photo for going to the vet. <laughs> Hello! Oh. Hmm. No scratching the car. Oh. Say bye, Phil. She, the vet just came out and took Phil. I was filming, um, but then she said she's going to sedate him and panic took over and I had to ask loads of questions and the phone just went away. Um, but yeah, so she is currently going to sedate him to do some biopsies. We didn't really expect all of that. I would have thought you'd get booked in for like an operation for that, not in your first consultation. Um, and it kind of took me a bit by surprise. So he's having five biopsies done, a blood test, um, and we've given the name of the person that recommended us so they can look at what they did for that dog. Um, uh, and while we were concerned a bit that we couldn't go in there, at least they did rectify that and they spoke to us on the phone and came out and did speak to us, so it's yeah, not actually that bad. It isn't that bad, to be fair. They're still getting the full 
because we were a bit yes, nervous the amount of money we were paying just to speak to somebody and we weren't going to really get to speak to them and on that note of money oh god yes yeah, so it was a 290 pound consultation that has turned into 1200 pounds worth of tests so far just to do the tests that's just today like we knew it was going to be expensive when we had 290 pounds for a consultation because usually our, our vets is about 34 pounds to see them for like a 10 minute consultation this is 290 so yeah it definitely goes into a different level and now 1200 pounds of tests and then they made me sign it for 1200 pound up to and she said she'll try and keep the cost low though has anyone ever else been told by that for the, been told that by the vet be um update as well just called the insurance and our consultation is capped at 90 pounds this is 1200 pounds yay who's a big girl in the front seat hey. Is he restraining you? Hello, Mia. Is anyone else like, like th this is really, really hard. You came in for a consultation and now your dog's gone away from you. You're not with your dog. You've let your dog go off for medical treatment without you being there to know what's happening. They've told you what's happening, but you're not right next to them. So suddenly the anxiety kicks in and the panic and the worry and you can't see your dog. <laughs> Or is that just being ridiculous? They're obviously with a medical professional. It's just so hard. And this is just for a consultation. What, how much worse is it going to get? This is just the beginning. Starting to reevaluate everything and if it's worth it, but... I don't know, it's just... It, the skin is bothering him, it's itching him, and that's what's trying to push me to see what he needs to get done. I just want him back now and minutes and minutes are going by so slowly and then you can't explain it to him so imagine what's going through phil's head he's just been taken off with a stranger they're going to sedate him i don't know how they sedate him but then they're not here you know you're not there with him or oh, is his vet calling hello hi um, Um, yeah, he did. It was at Manchester Dogs Home that he had it done. It was just normal. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so, yeah, we'll go ahead with what I said. So, we'll give him um, some sedation and we'll take some biopsies and we'll take blood samples as well. Okay? Okay. Tell him that he's okay and daddy says he's okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. There was no way in my mind that I thought we'd be leaving him here for the day. We didn't even mentally say goodbye to him in the right way. Milo won't care. Hey Nico, what have you done? Come show me what you've done, Nico. Come on. Nico, what have you done? Come on. Nico, come on in. Look at being all sheepish. What did you do? Why have you put your ears back, Nico? You've done something. Come show me what you've done. Come on, let's go upstairs. Go on up. Go on up. Nico, up. Nico. <gasps> Nico, look at her. You're guilty. Come on, up, up. Nico, up. What did you do? Did you do anything? <gasps> Nico, what's this? 
light. What's this? Nico, what did you do? Did you get the toilet paper again? What is it, Nico? Look. Nico, up. Come on, let's show. Nico, come. Come, come here. On. Come on. Come on. Little girl. What's that? What have you done? Done here. Hey, why have you done this? Come here. Come here. She does this when she gets Sit stressed down. or something, and when she's left alone, she goes for the toilet paper. What's this? Why have you done it? Yes, she it did it you. once when there was a toilet paper shortage. Yes, it was you. What's this? What is this? Why have you done this? Hi, Shane. It's Ingrid from Rutland House. Hi. Does it have to go from his neck? Yes, yeah, because it's a, it needs to be a big blood sample. It's too big to go to his neck vein. Oh, okay. Can you do it on, yeah. underneath then, like where it's not going to be yeah. visible? Yeah, I'll do it as small as I possibly can. Is that all right? Yeah, that's okay. Thanks. Okay, great. Um, I'll give you a ring in a little while once we know what we're doing, okay? Okay. All right, bye. Thank you, bye. So update is it's nearly four o'clock. We've set the vet's call and said that we can go pick him up. Um, and we've decided to ditch the car and take the van so that we've got enough room for Nico as well. Because she was just getting really stressed at home um, and she hasn't been seen him all day. And I just think the house destruction alone without the worry from her. So she's coming too to see him. Phil, you waiting for him? <laughs> Good girl, Nico. He's coming. He's coming, baby girl. Standing in the rain, waiting for Phil to come out now. Getting a bit giddy and a bit emotional. Hey, baby, should we go see Nico? Just picked him up. Come on, Phil, go and eat the puddles. I'll get you a drink in the van. Let's go see Nico. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Home sweet home. Go see Nico. Go on in, Phil. Go on up. Good boy. Good boy, teddy bear. Come on, Phil. Why are you sniffing his Who's that, Nico? Oh, you got him back. Look at him in his little bandage. Teddy bear. That was for the IV drip, where they put the um, anaesthetic in. Come on, let me get him. Did it stress you out? So guys, we are home now. Um, this bandage is from where he had his cannula in, um, from where he was sedated. Um, and then he's got five. Oh, that's where they must have taken the blood. Just spotted that. 
Let's give it another patch. Phil, come here. Let me see you. Good boy, sit down. Sit, mummy, sit down. Good teddy bear. Go on, you sit. Let me see this tail of yours. So taking biopsies, two from his tail. This is the easiest one to show you. He's had stitches put in all of them. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not going to touch him because I think it might hurt him. But they said he doesn't need a comb because the stitches only need to be in. They're only small biopsies, so they don't need to be stay in for long. Is that another one? No. It's just his hair loss, random hair loss patches. Um, so the vet said that the results are going to take up to three weeks for the blood tests and 10 days for the biopsies to come back. What's this one? No, that's just normal hair loss as well. Um, yeah, up to 10 days for the biopsy results to come back. So Phil has been tested for his thyroid um, problems, hypothyroidism, like four times in his life. He has also been tested for cushions and some urinary tract related uh, stuff. All of that's come back negative. Um, they're testing for all sorts at the moment and that's going to lead to the next level of tests. She thinks the next one will probably be an ultrasound that will be needed. Uh, but she'll wait for the biopsy results to, to check that. But she does think it's all something to do with hormonal. She doesn't think it's allergy. She doesn't think an allergy test is worth it because it's, he's not irritable enough. He's not itchy enough. Um, she's tested a few allergies around his, um, or she thinks there's some bacteria on his belly and his pores, but nothing that would warrant um, anti antibiotics. Forgot the word. Oh my god. Um, so yeah, we're no closer at the moment, and I didn't expect. I thought usually it's a couple of days for bloods to come back at our normal vets, but this is two to three weeks down the line. That's what he does when he wants to itch his tail. Um, so yeah, we will update you. He seems okay in himself. The vet did say to take it easy today. No, Phil. No, don't no jump in. So, guys, we will update you as soon as we know more. Thank you for watching. Goodbye, Phil. Hold on.